Thompson, and I'm just so glad you joined us tonight. Listen, this is going to be a phenomenal show, and I just want to encourage you right now to just go on, just from the beginning, just go ahead and get all those that, that want to come on in and tune in tonight. I believe there's going to be some deliverance tonight. There is going to be some powerful music. And listen, you know, if you have something before the Lord, if you have a petition before the Lord, if you have any request that you have that you want God to sort of come on in and move on your behalf, I believe tonight is your night. We've got some wonderful guests that are going to talk about prayer and deliverance. You're going to get reset, you're going to refocus. I think God is just going to shift your destiny tonight, all right? So just trust God and just believe in his son, Jesus Christ. And you listen, you can't go wrong. And so right now we're going to have a wonderful selection um, by an anointed woman of God, Kay Dean Williams Music Ministry. And the song that she's going to sing right now is called Great Jehovah.
gets all the praise and all the glory for that, right? Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, the building is full right now. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about Jesus tonight. Thank you, Lord. And thank you, Kadeen Williams, Music Ministry. You can hear some more from her later on in the show, and I know you can't wait for that one. But right now, I've got something that is going to bless your heart, I believe, tonight. Uh, we have Elder Gail Walton, and she is joining us tonight to talk about her ministry. She's got two ministries, <laughs> and we're going to talk to her about it tonight. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, so excited to have you tonight. And I heard you singing along. Oh, got blessed, didn't you? I did. They <laughs> were such a blessing. Awesome. Oh. We're talking about the great Jehovah. Jehovah. Oh, God. There's nobody like him. Nobody's nobody like Jehovah. Like, nobody like All right. Well, Gail, Elder Gail, tell us about yourself. I am... Elder Gail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of them call me the Good Elder. That's a affectionate name that they gave me the in the elder. ministry at church, the Good Elder. Okay, but all right. You can call me Gail because that's what mom named me. Okay. Uh, been in the ministry as a servant for several years. Okay. Love God, love worship, love prayer, love serving God's people, love seeing lives changed. Okay. As I always tell them that God is, um, when they come in, I tell them this is what I need you to know mm -hmm. is that my message is to speak to the brokenhearted. Okay. I have been an underdog in many situations and circumstances, so I understand how that person will feel that's brokenhearted okay. and that has been broken. And then that message is just to them to give them hope. Right. And then my call is to serve. I am a servant. Okay. I, I love it. You don't hear a lot of people say that they love serving, mm -hmm. but I do because when God when the disciples talked to Jesus, they, he had to tell them, who is the greatest among yes, these? Yes. Those that serve. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy serving. Uh, my dedication is to Christ, the one who died on the cross for Amen. me. My elevation comes from God, Daddy God. That's my affectionate name for him. And my motivation comes from the Holy Spirit, who is our leader, our God, our comforter, our teacher, our corrector. He's all that we need him to be as long as we listen to him and obey um, the voice that God has placed on the inside of us concerning him. Okay. All right. Well, amen. <laughs> well, I'm full. I'm full. I mean, that's just a blessing to hear you just say that. Um, it just is encouraging, you know, that that God is your all in all. I mean, right off the bat, we know God is your all in all. You hail from St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis. Now you're here in Atlanta. Yes, what I was re you? Look, a reset. A reset. <laughs> okay, reset. I am a uh -huh. PK. Okay. My grandfather was a pastor. My mom is in ministry. Okay. He had 12 kids, six of them are in ministry. Wow. Um, I. I was the little girl at church when uh -huh. they would come and pray and lay hands on you. I would go under the bench. Okay. And I'm the one now that going around laying hand praying laying because I up. ran from that. I do hail from St. Louis. I've been reset and replanted here. Okay. Um, that was because I had stepped out of who God called me to be in some younger years of mine. And to get my attention, he took me out of St. Louis and placed me here. So when I thought I came here, I thought I was going to be a... Uh, a, a big person with this major company that I was working for. I was okay. going to do all that I need to do. God allowed me to do that, but then he called me into ministry. Okay. And um, that's when the reset started. Okay. So you were in corporate America. You thought you corporate America, and you thought you were just going to oh, take yeah. that to another yeah, level? I just, I wasn't having no kids. I wasn't CEO, getting married. I was right. going to be traveling. Oh, yeah. And then God interrupted that. And he said, interrupted nah, that, and he's reset you and moved you to where you are right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, so talk about your ministry. It's God is God uh, under is. the okay. umbrella of Gail Walton Ministries. It's God is. Okay. It actually means just God, our daddy is sovereign. I teach people how, who God is. And even when he gave me the ministry, I didn't know who God was. He okay. said, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you that I'm the healer. I'm the provider. I'm your provision. Mm -hmm. I'm Gaborah. I'm your protector. I'm Nisi. I'm your banner. I'm El Elyon. I'm the most high God. And as you form your relationship with me, that is what I want you to teach others and to show them right. who I am. And so that's what we do. We do that through um, prayer conferences, through mm -hmm. conferences, through our morning glory fellowships when we gather together. Um, God is just saying, be an example of who I've called you to be before the people that I've placed you before. Okay, so God is, it was, and how was it birthed? How it did was it birthed in a one bedroom apartment. In a one bedroom apartment. In a one bedroom apartment, <laughs> because as, as our sister stated earlier, prayer was the ingredient that was missing in some of our churches and in our lives. Okay. And as God began to draw me closer to him, he took me into this place of prayer. Prayer was not unfamiliar with me. My mom's a praying mother, my grandmother, on 
Sundays, if we wasn't in BTU and six o'clock service, <laughs> at eight o'clock every Sunday yeah. night, we were sitting at the table with prayer before we went to bed. Okay. So that wasn't unfamiliar with me, but when I stepped out outside of what God was calling me to do, that became a missing part because I no longer had that to depend on. Okay. And as God drew me closer to him, he said, I want you to go into prayer and I would gather prayer. We didn't know what we was doing, but because of obedience, God led us how to, to become structured in prayer and how to start going and connecting with individuals that had prayer that was really going to teach you, teach me and show us how to really pray. And it developed there. And now it's just going on to do so many other things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when God is, you basically help people and teach people about prayer, mm -hmm. principles of principles of principles prayer, of prayer. Um, other, other areas you, you deal with? We do. I deal with um, brokenness. I deal brokenness. with healing. Um, most people think that healing is so spooky pooky because all they see sometimes is you laying hands on people, yeah. but you can speak healing to people. Sure. You can lay hands and that is a part of it and you can walk with people and I'm good with walking with people until they are delivered, until they get to a place where God wants them to be. Sometimes we don't have the perseverance to be able to walk with people and stay with them. And so through this ministry, I have found myself walking alongside people until they got where they needed to be, giving platforms for individuals that did not have any, and then allowing lives to be changed through the ministry of healing. So not only is it prayer, it's healing, it's focusing on one at a time. It's an intimate ministry. I don't look at the numbers of how many people are coming in. I just ask God that his will be done. He gave me the scripture um, where he said, if I be lifted up, yes. I'll draw all men unto me. And so he said, Gail, what I need you to do, this is your purpose, is to get a place, set an atmosphere, invite me in, and then allow me to draw them into my presence, and then I do the rest. You're the evangelist. You're the gatherer. Get them before me, and then let me do the work in them. And I love how you said that, because a lot of times, you know, we think we have to do all the work. Um, and God is saying, if you just obey me, mm -hmm. set the atmosphere, give me a place first, give me a place, invite me to come in, you know, because he's a gentleman, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, he's not going to go where he's not welcome, right? So he says, you give me a place, invite me in, and I'll do the rest, right? We don't have to force it, we don't have to push, we don't have to do all of that, right? Mm -hmm. You do okay. your part and God does his. And he's does. done through obedience. Through obedience, okay. And even though sometimes to be faithful, you look foolish. I know sometimes I was in there by myself, sometimes it was one or two, uh -huh. and we it didn't look like God was going anywhere. And I had people saying, what are you doing? Um, but through perseverance, God showed up anyway, yeah. because you have to go through the process. Yeah. Yeah. It, if you miss some of the steps, then you go back through it. You go back through the resets. You have to go back through the reset, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now we were talking about that where, you know, there were some things where, where God literally had to reset you, right? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Talk about that journey. Um, and it's, it's one of my testimony and I, I grew to embrace it, um, doing ministry and and growing in ministry and, and doing things, God had to give me a reset okay. because the vision that he had given me for this, I had allowed others to sprinkle, you know, their words and sure. their influence, what you should do. This is how you should do this. And, and this is what you need to be doing. And I got kind of caught up in that mm -hmm. and allowing what others thought to direct me and what God called me to do. Right. And then God said, no, I'm going to shut it down. Okay. I'm going to have to reset you yeah. back into the thing that I've really called you to do because your heart is broken. People have hurt you. You've out of my will and mm. you're not doing what I've called oh, you to my. do. So now I need to give you a do over. Oh man. <laughs> and so, you know, reset means yeah. to do over. Yeah. It's like, okay, Gail, I'm going to sit you down for a minute. When you get my heart wow. again, when you get the will of what I called you to do, then, and then I'm going to reset you. And then as I reset you, I'm going to show you what restoration really look like. Cause I'm God, I, your daddy who is right. sovereign. You know, oh man, and when I thought about that, I thought about a computer, you mm -hmm. know, when you reset a computer, and a lot of times computers reset, sometimes they shut down on their mm -hmm. own, right? Mm -hmm. Because they say, okay, there's something that's not quite right, we need to go ahead and reboot this, mm -hmm. but you literally had to do a shutdown mm -hmm. and let it reconfigure, mm -hmm. reconfigure yourself mm -hmm. and then come back up. And then he said, when it comes back up, it's going to be fresh. Mm -hmm. It's going to be new. Mm -hmm. It's going to be better than before. Cause all of that extraneous stuff, yeah. all of that extra stuff now is gone. Right? Yes. Yes. How hard was that? It was very hard because 
you know, sometimes we deal with egos, we deal with titles, and God wants us to go through brokenness. And so, you know, there were people look like, well, what happened to her? You know, she used to do this, she used to do that. Where is she at now? And it was God had taken me and put, covered me so that he could heal me, mm -hmm. so that I could get his heart and hear what he is actually saying for me to do in this season. He broke all of that um, being impressed with, with me or being impressed with right. other, what other, thinking of, Concerned, being concerned about what other people really thought and their two cents. God said, I got to get rid of all of that. Right. Because with that, I can't get you to where I need you to go and there are people waiting for you. So it was brokenness. It was yeah. painful. I, I wasn't preaching. I wasn't doing anything. You I was just, down. I was going to church, going home with the rest <laughs> of the individuals. Mm -hmm. But I understood when the man of God came to me and said to me, you're wondering what God is doing. But Gail, he's had to shut you down so that he can rebuild you, reboot, like a computer mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And then when he does that, he's going to restore you. And you are going to be better. Your ministry is going to be better. You'll have uh, ministry experiences mm -hmm. that you could share with others. You will have had a testimony that you have been in the desert. God made a way in the desert for you. And he's given you streams in your dry places. If you just sit wait and obey and that's what I had to do it was not easy but now coming out of it I thank God for it wow okay so you just had to sit wait and obey sit wait and, and obey. you reset and so God brought it back better than it was before so now you have testimonies from that experience that you can share yes, with uh, women across the globe talk about your you have an event coming up mm -hmm. in February uh -huh. 26 mm -hmm. February, Tell us about that. February 26th, it's at the Word of Faith Love Center, um, 2435 Bill Hill Road in East Point, Georgia. Okay. Um, we will be meeting there at 10 a.m. in the morning. It's the Morning Glory Fellowship. Okay. We have our worshiper coming out of North Carolina. We have an executive pastor who's speaking that's coming up out of Pell City, Alabama. Um, we have prayer intercessors that are going to be there with us, setting an atmosphere, inviting all those to come in and really be administered on what it looks like, what a reset really looks like. Right. And in the body of Christ and in the natural, because it's first natural, then spirit. And so there are resets that we have to do in the natural, and then we allow God to do them in the spirit. And we want to share that with the women, those who feel like I'm not where I'm supposed to be, or God is not going to forgive me for what I've done. We want them to know that grace loves you, God loves you, grace abounds and when you take the time to recreate yourself and to to reconnect with God and the spirit that's in you we want to show you that when you do that there is hope and there is a purpose and there is restoration you are going to look fatter you're going to look fuller you're going to look bigger you're going to be more anointed right. once you go through the process and you know we say fat you know it's pretty hot and tempting well we want you to come in, yeah. But we want to deliver the fat, the F-A-T, okay. that false attachments to the temple that we carry okay. sometimes that allow us and stops us from doing what God has told us to do because what we're hearing is false. Mm -hmm. What we're operating in is false and it's attached itself to the temple. And that's not what God wants out of us. God wants him to get the glory out of us. He said in his word, he told us that, he all, um, that his, his glory will be revealed in all yeah. men and that he will show it to us and we would all see it together. God just wants his glory. He just wants what he created you to do for him. And once you do that, it's just like your husband or your, your um, significant other or your wife. When you get in their presence and when you glorify them and tell them that meal was good, when you <laughs> tell them this house looks good, yeah. and when you start to encourage them and when they get to hear the goodness of you, it comes up like a sweet smell and aroma unto their nostrils. Okay. Now just think about God Let's when we get in his God. presence. Yep. We live him up. We undress who we are. We're not worried about time because we don't have to be in a service that's streamlined. God has given us the ability to really be before him. Okay. And that's what I want the women to experience, to experience just being in God's presence, listening to him, pouring your heart and allowing God to do the healing so that you can do the work and do and do the call that God has purposed you to do. All that out of a one bedroom apartment. All of that out of a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> And it just, when you said that, I didn't share this with you, but when you said that, when I started my prayer line, mm -hmm. I think it was 2014, it started in a two bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, you know, because we'd moved from a house, we're downsized, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes you, God's got to downsize mm -hmm. you. You don't even mm -hmm. realize what's happening, you know, mm -hmm. but downsize. And that's where it started in the apartment. Mm -hmm. 
and I just thank God, you know, when you said that, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna, you know, but uh, he will do things while he's got you in a place, because he said, I got you right where I want you, right? Mm -hmm. Got you right where I want you. Mm -hmm. And you're also an entrepreneur. Damn. <laughs> Talk about that. Um, even through that, where God, where, where it says God will give you um, a game for your pain. My mm -hmm. twin sister, I love her dearly. She's gone unto heaven. Okay. When she passed, I found some of my grandmother's recipes and I started retweaking them. Okay. And um, I would go home because she was in a coma for a while and she had children. I would go home and help my parents. But I would go home and I would just start baking. Okay. And so the business double pound cakes was birthed out of my twin sister, double means two. Double, uh-huh. And then God, I said, God, when you restore this, how am I going to fund this? He said, I'm going to give you seed. Okay in baking, and you're gonna have one ingredient in that cake that, that some of the others might not have, that might not have. and it's prayer. Prayer, <laughs> okay. And so that's how Double Pound Cake started. The tagline is, we give you twice the taste and double the flavor. Twice the taste, double the flavor. <laughs> and um, it has been a success from where it's humble beginning. I thank God for it. It has opened some doors to communicate. Um, I pray over it and ask that uh, God would bless the people that eat it because it's right. bread. You know, healing bread is for healing. Yes, yes. And so I pray over the bread and uh -huh. I ask God, God, whoever gets this, let it be good conversation and let them be healed in whatever area that their body needs, even if they don't know that they yeah. need it. Yeah. This is the purpose for that. See, and I love that when believers have, you know, ministries like that where they can be praying over food and people don't even realize, you know, what's happening, that that healing and that prayer has gone into uh, whatever you've made or whatever you've created. Even that love, mm -hmm. you know, because it seems like you can tell when, when food is made with love or, or there's some anointing on the food, amen? And so that's a beautiful thing. Where can we get your Double Pound Cakes? You can go to doublepoundcakes.com. That's the website. You can view it. There will be a number there. You can put your order in. It's going to come to me. I'm going to call you to make sure that's what you want. Okay. Let you know when you can pick it up, when it will be ready. Okay. Um, I do um, events, church events. I'm also in Lickety Split. I guess I'm giving them a kudos. Lickety Split, and okay. They're in it off of um, Virginia Avenue. You can go in okay. that restaurant and purchase it as well. Um, and through uh, word of mouth and through the church. Okay. Is how we so it's doublepoundcakes.com. Mm -hmm. And then you can also get it from Lickety Split mm -hmm. off Virginia Avenue. Uh -huh. Okay, and again, February 26th. Uh -huh. Give us the address for it's that. It's 2435 well. Ben Hill Road, East Point, Georgia. The Word of Faith Love Center where my dynamic pastors. Okay. Thank you. Give them a shout out. It's All Pastor right. Reginald P. Garmin and Lisa Garmin. Okay. We're going to meet there at 10 a.m. You can come dress casual. You can dress up, but we want you to be whatever you wear. We okay. want you to be able to get in the presence of God. Get in the presence of God. Okay. And how can people get in touch with you? I know they can go to Double Pound Cakes. You can go to Double Pound Cakes. Put on Facebook too. You can go to Facebook. Okay. Um, Gail Walton Facebook. And then God is Ministries is on okay. Facebook as well. Um, so that's how you can reach me. And then I do have my phone number, okay. which is 770-310-5610. Again, that's 770-310-5610. One zero. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Well, thank you, Elder Gail. I've enjoyed speaking with you today. God thank bless you. you. God bless all you. you. <laughs> all right. That was phenomenal. And now we have Katie Williams again with Goodness of God.
right, welcome back to Atlanta Live, and I hope you enjoyed that selection, Goodness of God, and we've got some more music coming up, but I want you now to just relax now and just listen to this beautiful woman of God as she is going to talk to you about her prayer ministry and her life. It's a phenomenal journey. I have none other than Minister Carla Gaskins on the on the set with me. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm just so excited to talk to you. As we were talking earlier, you know, your life has just been a very interesting journey in that you're, when God called you, basically to him, to him, not, 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 not talking about the calling of ministry, but just coming to him. It was just a phenomenal story, a testimony, um, and I've not heard anything like it. So share with us how you got that call. Um, and it was, uh, I was in Germany. I was married at the time. My ex-husband was in the military. And I was, I had just turned 21 and I had a dream and it was like in the middle of the night. I had a dream where there were family members, my father's family and my mom's family, they all were together in one home. And in the dream, it seemed so real. They were all running around the house preparing foods and I was like, who is this food for? And they they didn't hear me. It's like they were looking right through me. And I, you know, thinking back on it now, I know it was like a vision inside of the dream. Right. And it was a visitation. And so I kept saying, who's coming, who's coming? And no one would answer me. They literally would walk through me um, like I was a ghost or something. And then all of a sudden, everybody just immediately stopped what they were doing. Like they were, whatever they were doing, they were frozen in, th in their tracks. Mm -hmm. And I said, what's going on? And I heard someone say, he's here, he's here. I said, who's here? And everybody was looking towards the front door. And I looked and walked to the door and I walked out the screen door and I saw a form like a body mm -hmm. and the closer it got I understood who it was right. and it was Christ it was Jesus himself and I saw the robe beautiful linen robe but it was a little tattered at the bottom and it had blood on the bottom and I saw this uh, this foot in the sandal come up on one foot on the stair and I saw a hole in the foot. Mm -hmm. And then I saw his hand as he touched the rail, I saw a hole in his hand and immediately in the dream I could feel, it's really hard to explain what I felt, but I felt that strong presence of God and it was almost like he was calling me to him. And, and I was walking towards him and the closer I got to him, I was getting ready to touch him and I woke up out of the dream. Okay. And immediately I had had this overwhelming feeling to just fall on my knees. I started weeping and nothing major was going on in my life for me, you know, to say I needed Jesus right. because I was young. I just turned, you know, 21 and my life was fabulous. I life, was living right? a wonderful life. Uh -huh. And in, in that moment, it was the Holy Spirit that led me through the prayer of salvation. And I gave my life to the Lord in that bedroom in the middle of the night in Heilbronn, Germany at the age of 21. Okay. And my life has been like a roller coaster ride. Was it perfect when I gave my life to the Lord? No, it wasn't. I had some falls. I had some things I had to, you know, pick myself up from. And, you know, I, you know, I just went through the journey and allowed the Holy Spirit to just call cultivate what he was doing and what he had what God had done for me now what took you what led you and your husband to Germany well he was in the military okay. and I was young so you know I went and traveled with my husband well my ex-husband at the time and you know I uh, just going back to the dream I just remember you know I remember I had a dream but not before you know, I got saved, but I remember seeing, uh, literally seeing Christ on a cross, wow. but it was after, you know, and it was like immediately after, like maybe the next day or two after that. So it was sort of like a confirmation, mm -hmm. um, but to have that ahead of time, what were you thinking? I mean, wh what, what went through your mind as you, as you, I guess when you, I know when you got up, the Holy Spirit led you and you accepted Jesus as Lord. He led you through the prayer of salvation. But what were you thinking from that point on? I mean, you had to have gone through it and after, you know, a phase yeah. afterwards where you're like, 
what really happened? Did yeah. it really happen? Yeah, I did have questions. And the next day when I got up, I actually went to um, the, 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 the post that we were on. It had like a little small chapel and it had all these different, you know, types of services. And I didn't know who was in there at the time, but I knew it was open and I went inside and, and come to find out, walk in. It was during a Bible study um, and it was a Christian service. You know, people who knew the Lord understood, you know, you have all these, you have the Catholic, the Hindus yes. and all that. But this was a, a Christian service going on, and I sat in the back of the sanctuary, and I waited until Bible study was over, and I shared the experience with um, the pastor of that service, and he looked at me like he saw a ghost, and he said, I can sense and feel what you experienced, the way you described everything. And he said, do you know what happened? I said, no, I just know that I had, I, it was an overwhelming feeling for me to repent and ask for forgiveness and get, and just say, hey, I need you, Jesus, in my life. And he said, the Lord himself came and offered you salvation. Mm. And he said, you are saved. And he said, now you have to go and tell somebody about your salvation. And I was like, wow. And then, you know, from there, that's when I learned about salvation and sharing the love of Jesus and what he did on the cross for us. Okay. So after that, then you're back and tell me what happens now after that. Let's move move some years ahead. Okay, so years ahead, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to church, I'm learning the things of God, but there was still something missing and I wasn't quite sure what it was. It wasn't until I actually moved here to Atlanta in 1995. Okay. I had already given my life to the Lord, you know, years ahead of that. And when I got to Atlanta, my thought, you know, I'm just, you know, still learning. I thinking I can party and still love the Lord. You know, you just living wild and doing whatever. And my plans were to come to Atlanta, you know, create this wonderful life because you hear so many wonderful things about Atlanta during that time. And God really arrested me because he wouldn't allow me to do or be involved in any of the things that I had done before I moved here. And so he just set my, my, my path to my destiny. And then in 2000, I believe it was 2002 is where I really understood what the call on my life was. And it was for intercession. Okay. And so, like I was explaining earlier to you, um, I had grandmothers who prayed. It was sure. my mom's mother, my dad's mom, my dad's grandmother. And as a child, I remember being around them when they would pray. And I would always want to just hover around them even after every all the other kids would leave, they would cover us and pray. But there was always a safety in, in prayer. And I just wanted that feeling again. And I was, you know, in after my third grandmother passed away, I understood something supernatural was happening to me because whenever one of them would pass away, I would feel this like a blanket, but it felt like comfort mm -hmm. falling on me. And I thought it was just God's way of, you know, comforting yeah. through the hurt of losing them. But when my mom Mom's mother passed away is when I understood God was laying a mantle of prayer on me. And so I have a mantle of over 300 years old of prayer and intercession on me. So when I add their ages and my age, then I understood the importance of prayer. And that's what makes it so precious to me. Yeah. And it's interesting you said that because a lot of times we look at when we think generational, the first thing we want to say is we, we, we're, getting re we're ready to, you know, rebuke a, a generational curse, mm -hmm. you know, or we're ready to, you know, uh, this stops here, you know, but you're embracing it. Say this keeps going. This is a generational thing. Yes. And so this is something you can pass on to maybe your children or somebody that, you know, uh, is, is hungry and thirsty for prayer. Yes. Um, I just think that's a beautiful legacy, a beautiful gift uh, that you've been blessed with. Uh, that gift of prayer. Yes. And so now you have a prayer ministry and you're blessing people all over the world. Talk about your prayer ministry. Um, I have what we call the prayer clinic okay. and how the prayer clinic came about was I had, you know, been in, I had, I'd been in prayer asking God for answers to a really dark place in my life. I had just went through a divorce and so many things was happening. Like it was overwhelming, like one blow after the other. And I was like, God, I know you are there. I know you have the answers and I need them. And God spoke to me and he said, you have the answers because all of the prayers that you have prayed and how you have prayed them, I want you to understand that you can share those with other people. And that's what has been keeping you. And I remember one day I was just driving. I was asking God, I said, okay, then you have to 
show me how to do this. And just minding my business, a couple of weeks later, I had this open vision where I saw this outstretched body and it had holes in the body. Okay. And I'm thinking, okay, God, speaking to me about my body, do I need to be in prayer <laughs> yeah, about healing, right. you know? And so, you know, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that the body of Christ has a vitamin P deficiency. And so I was like, well, what is a vitamin P vitamin deficiency? P. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said, my bride has a vitamin P deficiency, a deficiency of prayer. Wow. And so... God was just really revealing to me that everything that he had taught me with prayer, the strategies he's given me, and to look at the answers that he gave me in those strategies, to use those strategies to teach others, and to also be a conduit to allow the Holy Spirit to move and work through me to raise up intercessors, okay. to birth intercessors, and to wake up intercessors. Wake up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so when you're talking about prayer and the prayer clinic, and it's a deficiency, not only it's in the body of Christ. Okay. Why do you think it is that it is that way? Why do you think that sometimes prayer is the last thing we do? You know, we get up in the morning, we've got our schedules. Uh, obviously, sometimes we just don't make time. You know, I, I have people that I know that every morning when they get up, oh my gosh, it's too late. You know, the alarm went off, but we hit the snooze and then we're gone. Right. What is it about prayer that we're constantly, it seems like that is one area that, that believers are constantly fought uh, against, you know, to, to the enemy would try to snuff out your prayer life mm -hmm. or minimize your prayer life. What, what is the struggle with that? I, th I think there are many struggles, but one of the things that I've noticed a lot is, uh, especially with teaching with the prayer clinic, I think with the body of Christ, um, people don't have the confidence to know that God can hear them mm -hmm. and that he answers their prayers. You know, we have, he, you know, here in, the, in America, we have all of these options. We have, you know, one thing don't work here, we can go and, and, and make it happen over here. Right. But we don't we don't receive our heavenly father, the God of everyone and the, the God that created the world and the one who spoke over the world that we have the, the right to right. go before his throne as believers, as his children, as you know, people who walk in our salvation, we have to understand that we can go before him. Christ said that if you go to the Father in my name, anything that you ask of him in my name, he will do it. And so we rush over the scripture, not realizing how powerful it is. Jesus gave us permission to go before the Father. And God himself says, come boldly. So he's inviting us. But I think one of the other things, one of the the other problems is we're so busy that we're not taking the time to spend with God. And when you, when, you know, like the sister was saying about the time when you're speaking or, you know, something wonderful to the spouse or whatever, prayer is that intimate time that you communicate with God and you're loving on him. You're, 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 you're telling him, I need you. I want you to answer me. I'm believing that you can handle this for me. It pleases God, you know, when we go before him in prayer. The scripture says that he is pleased when he hears our prayers. And I think between the lack of confidence in us having so many distractions, I believe that's the reason why a lot of people just won't pray. Just won't pray. And I think about the waiting, because that's another thing that um, Elder Gail said, uh, was that um, the waiting... We don't want to wait. We want to ask for something. And a microwave generation, I heard a minister say, this is a micro microwave generation, but God is a crock pot kind of a God where things don't always come immediately. And we do have trouble waiting. Mm -hmm. You know, that we want this instant gratification. And some things happen right away, right? Right. But other things may take a little time, may take a little processing. We may need to be reset. How can we in prayer embrace the waiting? You know, how do we just focus on not, you know, not focus so much on God, I need it so much right away, but, but just trusting you more with knowing that you know the time, God. You, you know when it is I need, what I need, how I need it. Mm -hmm. And if I need it, right? Because everything we ask for, we don't, we don't get, nor do we need, right? Right, right. How do we stay focused and not be so upset or disappointed that it didn't quite work out the way we wanted it to? 
I think, um, again, you know, like you said, we live in a society where we want everything right away. Mm -hmm. But if you rush something, it's not going to be perfect. Okay. And patience develops our faith walk. Patience develop our um, ability to, um, to trust God in what we are expecting him to do. If we're, expect if we're praying and asking God for healing, mm -hmm. There, there is something that we have to do on our end. It's an exchange when we're praying. Right. So you can't just say, oh, God, do this and give me that and give me this without you giving something back to him. Give your faith back to him. Allow him to work in his timing. God's timing is not ours. He's an eternal God. And once we understand that he's an eternal God, he's not going to rush to do anything right. because he, he'll do it whenever he wants to. He's sovereign. Um, I would never want someone, I would never want to put in an order for something I saw. Let's say, for example, this table. Sure. It's, if I put in the order, it's not going to come to me in the next hour or two. Mm -hmm. I've got to wait for it to go through the process right. in order for it to be shipped to me. And that's another problem. People do not like the process. Prayer comes with process. Sometimes God will answer right away and sometimes he won't. And that's because he want us to, to co continue coming to him. He want us to seek him and search him and worship. He want us to, to trust him and search him out in his word. Okay. Amen. Amen. And I'm looking at this destiny shaker. All right. Where is this book available? Tell us a little bit about this book. Uh, Destiny Shaker can be found on my website, CarlaGaskins.com. Okay. And the book is uh, Strategies of Prayer that's uh, intertwined with uh, my, my uh, testimony of what God has done for me. Um, one of the things I'm, I, one of the things that, that I always teach in the prayer clinic is the uh, is repentance and forgiveness. Okay. Um, that that's a strategy to prayer. You cannot go before God and ask Him for anything if you don't have a repentive heart, if you don't have a forgiving heart, if you're walking with bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, your prayers are not really going to go anywhere. And then you know I also talk about um, there's a chapter in there called Crumbs. I love that chapter, mm -hmm. um, and you know. God gave that to me and with it, in, in prayer you're to chase after God in the word you chase after him you run after him in prayer and the, the crumbs acronym means to um, chase righteousness until miracles and blessings show up and that's a strategy as well okay wow and so we can get this where can this be at carlagaskins.com carlagaskins.com yes okay so now February 26th you've got the, the throne room experience. Throne room experience. Yes. Okay. T tell us a little bit about that. We got about a minute left. Tell us okay. about that. So the throne room experience is um, a um, an opportunity that God says to create a space for Him. No names, no titles, nothing about nobody, but just about Him. He want His intercessors to gather. Whether you're in the fivefold ministry, no matter your title, if you're an intercessor, which should be the most important thing of your ministry, God wants to revive, restore, and refill you as an intercessor. Over these last two years, we've gone through this pandemic and intercessors have taken hit and hit and blow after blow. And so this is an opportunity for people to gather worshipers, worship leaders, and whatever your, your ministry you're leading in to come in and be poured into and allow God to just to pour, pour in you. you. Okay, and this is February 26th. February 26th at Shekinah Glory Tabernacle in Decatur, Georgia. Okay, and they can go to your website? They can go to my website, CarlaGaskins.com to register. All right, intercessors, leaders, you know, go to this event. It's, again, February 26th at Shekinah Glory. Go to CarlaGaskins.com and pick up her book as well. Phenomenal woman of God. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. You. Oh my gosh, it was such a blessing to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Well, I tell you, there's some power tonight that we've got Kaden Williams and Let Praise Rise. Check it out. <laughs>
All right. Well, I'm just so excited to be able to have been here with you tonight. And I want to leave you with an encouraging word tonight. And if I were to ask you a question right now, that question would be, what's for dinner? All right. Well, what's for dinner? Because, hey, it's about dinner time, right? And I want to just remind you about a scripture in Matthew 15 where a woman brings her daughter to Jesus because she is vexed with a devil. And if so, I were to ask you what's for dinner, I'm going to say back to you, healing would be for dinner. Listen, we've talked about it all night tonight about what God can do for you. All right. And so this woman brought this daughter, her daughter to Jesus. And he says to her, you know, uh, woman, I, I don't, I don't have anything to do with you. And she says, please, Lord, please. And you know, some of you have been coming to God and asking him, please, Lord, do this thing. And, and he, she says to him, listen, you know, even if they're crumbs, he says, I can't, I can't give you what is this, you know, the crumbs, the crumbs. And she's like, I'll take the crumbs. Listen, dogs, we, we'll get those crumbs as long as we can get a piece of it, right? And so what I want to share with you tonight is that there is something for you at the table. Whatever you've been waiting for God to do, God is saying, this is your time, that healing can belong to you. What are you filled with right now? What has consumed you? Are you filled with doubt? Are you filled with fear, maybe disbelief? Maybe you've waited for so long for the healing and it has not happened yet. I hear God saying, come on and take me on and come to my table. It is spread tonight where the feast of the Lord is going on and I've got your healing. Whatever it is you need tonight, if you need psychological healing, if you need physical healing, if you need spiritual healing, you may need emotional healing. There's a lot going on in the land right now. There's sickness and disease. There's suicide everywhere. There is all these things that are happening in the land, wars and rumors of wars. But God says, I am a healer. Come on and get the crumbs because listen, a little bit that you get from a crumb can last a lifetime. Don't worry about what everybody is saying about what you can't get or what you don't deserve. You just come to the throne of grace boldly, like my last guest said. Come to the throne of grace and receive what God has for you. There is healing for you in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance for you in the name of Jesus. Just repent of your sins. Just forget about the past and let God work on this thing. Let him do this thing that he has promised he would do. Look, some of you have promises. You're waiting for God to fulfill the promise. God is saying, I am here and ready to fulfill. Have faith in me. Trust me. Believe me. Pick up that crumb. Listen, you may feel humiliated right now. You may feel embarrassed, but get on your knees because when you get the crumb off the floor, that's a way of getting on your knees and repenting and saying, God, thank you for everything that you've done for me. All right, so I want to encourage you, what's for dinner tonight? Listen, healing, you need to share with somebody, healing is yours. Thank you so much for joining us on Atlanta Live. God bless you. My name is Kay. See you soon.